We are officially recording. Welcome everybody to the Wednesday afternoon team call. I'm super excited. Um, I'll give a proper introduction, but I just want to go over a couple announcements. If you're wondering what the audio was we're listening to, one of my all-time favorites that I first heard back in 2011 from Art Williams. It's called Just Do It. I just put it in the chat box, uh, the recording, if you want to click on that and save it for later. Um, I, I, how many of you felt like that before? If I could just, any of your coaches, any of your challengers ever say like, that negative mindset of, I, I can't do it, I don't think I make, just give them three licks until they can get that mindset right. <laughs> um, I absolutely love Art and his, uh, some of the mindset and philosophies that he shares in that. So um, I always put a, a personal development audio at the beginning of, the, of these team calls to remind you guys uh, that that is one of our four vital behaviors. Uh, one of the top priorities that you should be doing every single day before you even start messaging people and doing the the strategic things that Tate might be te teaching you today to build your business. It's the, the mindset is the foundation and the main building blocks that are going to hold uh, your business together and help you build a strong foundation of something that lasts. So uh, with that being said, uh, the only announcement that I really have is I hope you guys enjoyed your super weekend events. Um, absolutely incredible. The first time ever, it was a coach open house, which was a coach opportunity meeting. I, uh, one of the most, uh, incredible things that I loved about that was that um, inside of that there were four, five different videos. I think they were all bunched together in one, but there's five different videos that are coach opportunity videos that um, are going to be placed as shorter video clips inside of the coach online office, so that you can share them as a third party tool to educate your um, your current customers and your coach prospects on what the coach opportunity is. So. Um, they're absolutely incredible. If you didn't get to go to a super weekend and want to see what that is, I have the entire, um, uh, all the videos combined together on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch them there for now until they come up on the, the uh, Coach Online office. But those tools will be available. As you guys know, when I, get, um, when I see them in my Coach Breaking News, I'll share them in the team page so you guys are aware of that when they come out. Next thing I want to share is the next super weekend. Uh, event that you can go to is uh, either going to be November 1st, 2nd, or 3rd. It will be a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, depending on your location and where you're at. Um, there's just events hosted uh, throughout the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. by local coaches. They put it together, their own time, energy, efforts. Uh, it's a volunteer position to run those events, and they will be hosting one in a, somewhere near you. Um, Ashlyn Hall lives about 25, 30 minutes from me. She's going to host one in our hometown, so I'm gonna do that with her and we're gonna do one in November here in Idaho Falls. So uh, we're already planning for that event. Um, and so I want you to always already be looking forward to that event as well because it's something you can educate your local customers on and bring them with you. Even though it won't be a coach opportunity, coach open house like the last one, it's still a great place for them to come do a live workout, see what the community is all about. It's just like bringing them to a mini summit for those of you that were at summit. Uh, give them experience of what this company really is. So. Uh, I love Tamara. Let's give Tamara a shout out. Uh, hers is eight hours away, her next super weekend, but she's going eight hours to go to her super weekend. So if you see some of these diamond coaches and coaches that are hitting success club, uh, there's no secret to what it is. It's a full commitment. And that's what I see when I see Tamara saying that going eight hours, that is a full commitment of being committed to her business. So shout out to her for that. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to introduce Tate. Uh, Tate is an incredible coach. I'm just going to share a few things with you guys. Uh, he's hit Success Club every month since starting his business. Uh, the last two months, well, in uh, May and June, he hit over Success Club 10. And we're on the last day of July. And he's at, as far as yesterday, I don't know where he's at today. He's at Success Club 36, which means he's brought on 18 new customers or coaches with a challenge pack into his business in the month of July alone. Uh, he's like, a coach or two away from Diamond, so he's uh, just crushing his business. Uh, one thing that I want you guys to, to know uh, that I really, Gabby and I were talking about this, and this is for you to hear, Tate, as you get ready to lead this team call for us today. When I started my business, I hit Success Club 10 my first three months. Lindsay put me in a team cup, uh, which was a challenge. Uh, in that month, she challenged me to go Diamond and do the best that I've ever done, and we wanted to win this team cup. And so I got around other people who were crushing it at business. And these people, if you think back or look at them, it was Lindsay Matway, myself, Katie Hefner, Shay Stanford, and Melanie Mitro. 
All five of us are in the Legacy Club or the million, formerly known as the Million Club and have built incredible businesses. But what we did is we surrounded ourselves with people that had big dreams, big worth, ambition, and we worked together to rise up and do more than we've ever done before. So that month I'd hit Success Club 10, Success Club 10, Success Club 10, got into that, and I hit Success Club 32 that month, the highest ever. And literally that was the moment when I said, okay, if I can do Success Club 32, I can hit 10 for the rest of my life. Like I can help five people for the rest of my life if I can do 32 in one month. So it really set the standard for me. So my challenge to you as you listen to Tate, share about how he's doing what he's doing, how he's marketing, how he's adding uh, the value around the challenge pack, is look at it and say like, okay, I need to surround myself with people like Scotty, like Michael who's hit Success Club 10, like Tate, and I need to rise up with them. See what they're doing, be challenged by them, rise up and work together with them to rise up in my own business because my family's deserving of that. I need to show myself how strong I am because that's who we are, right? Dynasty strong, empowering others to continually develop into our fullest potential and helping others do that. We're not here to wallow in our limiting beliefs for the rest of our lives. We're here to grow and become the best possible people and our mission is so important, which is helping people and the trend of obesity, helping people rise up and there's millions of people out there who are unhappy with their jobs and that could benefit from earning an extra $500 or so a month. And it's our job to teach them and show them how through our example, our coaching, our mentoring, and this team. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to pass the time over to Tate and let him teach us the ways. And Tate, I'll just unmute you so you are ready to go. All right. Yeah, okay. all <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? All right. Good deal. Um, so first of all, I want to just say thank you to Scotty for giving me this opportunity. It really is uh, just a blessing and this entire business has just been a blessing for me and my family and I feel like I'm finally doing uh, what I was made to do as far as a career goes. Um, and I do apologize in advance if my dog starts going crazy because his mother is on the way home right now. Um, so with that being said, uh, and you can see the PowerPoint fine and everything. Does it look good? All right. Um, so yeah, like Scotty said, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, marketing and the value of the challenge pack. And when he asked me a couple of days ago if I would be willing to lead this call, um, I honestly didn't know exactly what to talk about. But I sort of started thinking about uh, what's going on with my team and some of the ways that I see them struggling and some of the questions that they're asking me. And it seems a lot of it seems to do or have to do with marketing and a lot of questions about um, sort of the challenge pack or, you know, how to how to promote the challenge pack or dealing with um, a year BOD subscription or three months and all of that. So those are the main things that I wanted to jump into here. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about me, first of all, if I can get this to go. OK. Um, so my name is Tate Cox. I'm 28 years old. I will be 29 on Friday. Actually, I live in Lexington, Kentucky and, um, <laughs> and I live with my wife Peyton and our golden doodle Archie. As you can see, he is very jealous of his mom. Um, so he, like I said, he's probably going to go crazy when she walks through the door. Um, I got started in this business, uh, well this year, but in February, but last year was when I first started doing uh, beach body programs for the first time. I was one of those guys for the past eight or so years that's just been uh, going to the gym consistently, uh, trying to lift heavy, do all this uh, sort of thing. I've always been big into fitness, but after doing that for so long, it starts to take a toll on your body if. Uh, if you know much about that, uh, I was starting to have some neck issues, some lower back problems, things like that. And my wife had actually been a BOD member uh, for two years before I ever did one single beach body workout. Um, she was on the three month or the quarterly plan, uh, just kind of doing, you know, her workouts here and there whenever she wanted to. And one day she come, she came up to me and was like, Hey, why don't you, why don't you just try one of these workouts uh, for the first, you know, just try one, see what you think about it. And kind of watching her 
uh, go through those, I was like, eh, you know, it just sort of seems like a girly thing. Like it doesn't look like it's going to get me any results. Like I'm not sure about, about all that. So I started scanning through some of the programs and I come across old Sagi here, uh, the, the body beast. And I'm like, all right, this one looks like something I could maybe give a try. So <clears throat> Uh, jumped into that literally within like three days I fell in love with it I couldn't believe couldn't believe the results I was getting um, from that in such a short amount of time and how much you know just how hard and good the workout was within 45 to 50 minutes a day so I, I immediately fell in love I went through the program uh, finished the program saw great results and during this entire time uh, Peyton has been, my wife has been following some beach body coaches, some of them, you know, some of the top coaches in the company. And I would just be sitting on the couch at night and she would be sitting there scrolling through their stories and things. And I'm sitting there thinking like, man, how are these people just working out, sharing stories and making money? Like that, I was mind blown just like watching her do that. And I was, but in my mind, I was like, if these people can do this, I can do this. Like I, I love fitness enough and I'm so passionate about it. I know that I can help people in this regard. I mean, my, my background in school is, I mean, I went, I have an undergraduate degree in exercise science, a master's degree in sport leadership. Like this is my passion, but i would never been able to find the right job or one where I thought I could actually make enough money to support a family doing it. Um, so I, after kind of wrestling with the idea of becoming a coach back and forth, I started to reach out to one of the people that Peyton was actually following and I hesitated and I was like, you know what? Because they were both female. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I was just, I wanted, I would felt, I would knew that I would feel more comfortable if I was following a male getting started. So I got on Google search top male beach body coaches and here I am today with Scotty um, so that was a that's sort of just how my whole story got started uh, he made a call to me on Valentine's Day of this year um, it was love at first sight um, th then the next day uh, I was I was signed up and I was a coach and the rest is history from there so but anyway when jumping into marketing um, I have five tips that I want to share with you that have been really helpful for me. Uh, feel free to write these down if you want to. Uh, they seem to be doing okay for me, so I'm just going to share these with you. All right, so the five tips of marketing that I want to share with you, and a lot of these things I learned actually at Summit, um, or at least they were reiterated to me in a way that really made me push for them. So number one tip, uh, you have to figure out what makes you, you. Um, and I, I'm going to dive into each one of these one by one as I go. Uh, number two, you have to be a product of the product. Number three is curiosity marketing. Uh, number four is create FOMO. So you've probably heard, a, you know, that mentioned quite a few times, but I don't know if anybody's actually ever taught you how to create FOMO. So I'm going to try to do that uh, for you. And then the fifth one is just uh, sort of some operational things, you know, how many times you should post and all that sort of stuff. And I'm by no means am I perfect at this stuff. Um, I'm still working on it every single day. So, so I'm going to jump in here and talk about number one, what makes you, you. Um, so, this is one thing I sort of picked up from at Summit, and it's to pick five things that are unique to you, the five things that make you who you are. And if you go to my Instagram, these are going to be the five things that pop up. Um, I'm a fitness slash business owner, um, both actually in the fitness industry with this company. Uh, my family also owns a grocery business, so I do that uh, full time as well, and I'm kind of bounce back and forth between both of those. Um, I'm a husband. I am a doodle dad. You will be, it's unbelievable how many people out there have a doodle and you can connect with over that, which is crazy. Um, I'm a Christian, I'm faith-based, and I'm a former athlete. 
Um, so guys, when I say these things, like these are my people, like when I go to make a post or I do something, these are the people that I'm going to connect with. There are, there are a lot of people out there that I will not connect with that Scotty will not connect with. They are specifically out there waiting for you to connect with them. Um, you have your own gifts and talents and unique um, traits that are just, you know, just attractive to you and for you. And there are people out there waiting for you to, to come help them and get them started on a health and fitness plan. Uh, so that's the first thing. Figure out those five things. And that should be the majority of your posts and the things that you're really targeting. All right. Number two is to be a product of the product you have. I'm sure you've heard this. It's definitely, uh, I think the number one thing in the success club system is to be proof. Uh, yeah, be proof that the products work. Um, so that was my second one there. And I'll, I'll talk about that first since I jumped into it. But like I have on the slide, you do not have to be super fit to be successful at this business. I've seen so many people, um, in this business that are not super fit, but they, do an amazing job of showing their progress and showing their transformations. Um, so that being said, like you need to be, if you're not there, you need to be constantly working on uh, progressing your health and your wellness and your body and all of that so that you can show people like, Hey, this stuff actually works. Like, because if you're not making any change, nobody's going to find that attractive. Um, and then the first one up there would be just to make sure that you're sticking to your beach body plan. I have, I've had a few people reach out to me, um, that talk about, you know, they'll say, uh, Hey Tate, how are you having success at such an early stage in your coaching career? I've been doing this for over a year. I've been doing this, this and this, and I'll go to their page and I'll look, I'll look at them and they'll be um, super fit people, but they're in the gym, on the treadmill, in the squat rack, um, doing flat barbell bench press. And all of that is great. Like if that's what you want to do um, to be healthy, like that's perfectly fine and that's awesome but it's going to be really hard to go do that at the gym and then try to promote a beach body challenge pack because you're not doing, you're not doing the workouts. So uh, that's one thing that has really stuck out to me uh, getting started. Uh, and then we'll jump on into curiosity marketing. Um, this one is absolutely huge, in my opinion. Maybe one of the most important things that you can learn from this. And these things, you, a lot of you have probably heard. I know I was absolutely terrible at this. Like my first week coaching, I had no idea what I was doing. But come to find out, I don't think I was the only one that has screwed this up. So I think Scotty actually maybe just sent me the video of Raina Odell like a week into my thing and was just like, here, watch this. So I was like, all right, Scotty, hit taken. Um, but it's an amazing video. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. She puts it very bluntly and will tell you exactly um, how you should be doing things. Um, so my next point on there was that you want your customers to have to ask you questions about what you're doing, um, which goes into that curiosity marketing. So I don't need to be if I'm promoting Morning Meltdown 100 right now. I don't need to be on my social media talking about. I'm doing morning meltdown 100 right now. This is, uh, and then I'm going to go drink my Shakeology and I'm going to have my energized before I start. If you do all of that and you show all the labels and you're telling everybody exactly what you're doing, you're giving away all the information. All they have to do, I mean, they can completely bypass you and you will never know that they were even interested in this in this product. They can just go to teambeachbody.com, sign up for a challenge pack, get their stuff, and you will never have a clue that they were even interested in what you're doing. Um, I saw uh, Shaylee asked what video you may, we can send that to her in the questions. It's from Raina Odell. 
um, but it just talks about curiosity marketing. Um, let's see, number four, we're going to talk about creating FOMO. So <clears throat> what does that mean? I know you've heard a lot of people say this during your time as a coach. Um, it means fear of missing out, but have, I don't know if you've actually ever had anybody tell you how to create FOMO. So uh, one thing I learned from, I was actually listening to a Tony Robbins uh, YouTube video that Scotty had shared. Um, and in it, he says something to the effect of, you want people to believe that whatever you are promoting uh, is the best stuff on the market and you are the only person that they can get it from. And I think he puts it in a little bit different language than that, but whatever you're selling, um, people need to believe that it is truly amazing. You're the only one that can get them those results. Um, so, and how do you go about doing that? I, I think I do it. The, the way that I try to do it is by sharing results from my customers and clients um, by constantly following up with them on a weekly basis, once at least, maybe twice. Um, and every single time that they share something with me, you know, I lot, I, and I don't care how big of a, you know, transformation or whatever it is. Like it could be, I lost two pounds. I had one guy send me last night. I've had, I've gone three days in a row with no soda. And he was like, that's huge for me. I immediately screenshot that and shared it to my story. And I was like, you know, we're not and in it. I was just saying like, this is not just a fad. You know, we're changing lifestyles, something like that. Um, because every little thing that you do for a client needs to be shared and people need to know that others are seeing results. Um, so that's the biggest way that I think that, that I create FOMO and I think Scotty does an amazing job at this. So <clears throat> truly just watch what people like him and some of the best coaches in the company are doing. Um, and that's guys, that's not being a copycat. That's doing what's called best practices. That's a business term of doing what the best people are doing and in hopes of getting the same return that they are. Can I share something right there, Tate? Yeah, absolutely. So any new coach that is on watching this right now or watches the recording, let's say you're just starting and you don't have uh, customer results yet of your own that you've actually coached, you can do the same thing if you're a part of, uh, for example, our, our Dynasty Strong Virtual Gym. All of those people in there are a part of your team um, that are doing these workouts with you as a part of this team. So if someone in there shares, if Brian shares that he's at 60 pounds weight loss or shows his before current picture of his face transformation, like that's something you can do what Tate is sharing. So I just want to make sure that was thrown out there so you're not sitting there thinking, okay, I got to first get some customers, get some results, and then I can start sharing. This is something you can do right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I probably shared five to 10 pictures of Scotty throughout my, you know, throughout my time. So, um, and then from there, we'll go into posting. So these are just, like I said, and, and posting is something that I need to get better at as far as, you know, what I'm actually, the, the picture and making it everything, you know, eye catching and all that, I need to get better at that. But um, as far as like the operational standpoint, you should be trying to do approximately five to 10 stories each day on Instagram. And I can't tell you how important Instagram stories are because that is the majority of what people are watching. If you go to Instagram, that is what's at the very top of the screen. More people like my wife, for example, she'll sit on the couch and she'll just watch story after story and will never even scroll through the post. So if you're not up there constantly in that story, you're getting missed. Um, so that is something to be just very conscious of. And guys, it doesn't have to be like something monumental, just be yourself on there. And that actually took me a while to kind of get used to um, as far as that goes, but just sort of share some things about your life, share a couple of workout clips and go from there. That's a great place to start. Um, 
you should be sharing um, at least one. I would try to share at least one post a day. Now there have been days where I've got to the end of the day and been like, man, I forgot to share something today, but honestly, I, I don't feel like I have anything. So I'm just going to let it go because if I try to rush it, it's going to just look stupid. So I'm just, just going to, I'm just going to, uh, that is a very good place to start. Um, and then I actually learned this from Hannah on our team call on my team call on Monday um, that she said, if you share something funny, cute, or scary that people are more likely to stop scrolling. Um, obviously I just put funny or cute in here. I don't know how many people you want to scare in your uh, social media, but um, just remember guys that when people are scrolling through your feed, like you literally have a split second to catch someone's attention, like as quick as they can go like that. That's, that's how much time you have to catch somebody's attention. So if you don't get it in there, you're going to be missed. Um, does anybody have any questions before I jump into the value of the challenge pack? Cause I think this goes a little bit of a transition here. Um, or if you've got anything to add Scotty, that would be, I just want to share on this one, on the posting one, just recently, probably a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I was thinking about some of the things you were talking about on the, what makes you, you. And like, I look at funny stuff on Instagram, like in my, in my spare time when, when Gabby's watching other people's stories and I'm done working for the day and I'm unwinding. And like, I like to find stuff that makes me laugh. So every time I find something that makes me laugh, I save it. And then I, I was like, well, if that made me laugh, my people, people I connect with are going to laugh at that stuff too. So then I just save them in my favorites and then I use them for my posts. And like, I usually get like uh, 60 to a hundred, let's say likes on a photos in like zero to five comments. Once I started doing that, like my posts the last two weeks, I have some with 60 comments and they're just humor, like things that I laughed at scrolling. And I'm like, and some of them I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I should share that. But I'm like, hey, that's me. I laugh at that. Like, that's that's the type of person I want to attract to someone that's like me. So I started sharing those things, and and that happened as well. And then even um, so, that's something funny. What you're saying, Tate, on catching someone's attention with the photo. The same thing goes if you're going to write like some post that's inspiring or adding value. You got to do the same thing and catch them at the very beginning with their. Um, I'm going to show you guys something with with a caption so your your caption might be like six paragraphs long and something you want to share let me show you what gabby did her, her caption is she used this photo right here for our anniversary post and it says have you ever wanted to strangle somebody yet they make you a better person right once you read that you're like okay i gotta read i gotta read this if you just went like i want to here's a happy anniversary to 13th anniversary People are like, oh, another anniversary post, maybe like it, maybe not, but scroll past. But if you do something like that, have you ever wanted to strangle someone? I mean, married people have wanted to strangle their spouse before. Like everybody, they're like, what? Somebody else? I got to read this. And so that's how you catch someone's attention, like what Tate is sharing right there. Tate, I'll give it back to you because this is yours. Okay. And then I like just going off of that, it, and I was going to add this in there too. It's, it's almost like you have to become a little bit of a blogger in, your, in the way that you tell a story on there and I'll share one that I did just a couple weeks ago. Um, and it got by far like 243 likes, which is way more than I ever typically get. Um, but it's just a picture of me and my wife. And then the caption, it says marriage at a young age can be extremely difficult. And then like down below it I have, or it could be the biggest blessing of your life. But when somebody is scrolling through all they caught was marriage at a young age can be extremely difficult. So they stop. So those are the kind of things that you just want to be thinking about when you're have, when you're posting. Um, so uh, let's see, Michael, did you have something yeah. that you? Yeah, I was just gonna I was gonna ask. I mean, how do you find the best times to post? You say once or twice. I mean, as far as in your main feed. Um, yeah, I've I've heard actually that 9 a.m. is a really good time to post. Um, so I try to get one out around there, but I've also found that I get a, a lot seems like a lot of interaction around like 9 p.m. as well. So I, I don't know exactly what the best times for that would be. Scotty may know a little bit more on that, but um, 
that mm-hmm. scene. You can see your insights on Instagram. You can look and it shows you when you get the most engagement. So kind of look at what your best post and then kind of see where that's happening. Yeah. You just, you can look at your insights on your Instagram. It's just right there in the right hand corner. Mine used to, for example, I used to get the best engagement before at 7 a.m. Mountain time, six, seven, eight sometimes. Now for me, it's six, seven, eight p.m. So it's really hard for me to shift because I'm used to putting that out in the morning. So now I'm working on writing it in the morning when I'm inspired after my workout and my PD and then saving it to put up later. So yeah, it depends. Just look at your own insights on when your audience likes to look. Yeah. And on that, this might be, and Scotty might actually disagree with me on this, but whenever I first started, I tried to um, turn my Instagram into a business Instagram so that you can see those insights. But I've actually found that because I don't have a huge following yet on Instagram, that it's easier for me to keep it with my Facebook so that everything shares to both. Um, Because I'm still getting a lot of whenever I share stories and things, I'm still getting a lot of customers from Facebook and I honestly don't want to have to go back and forth and share things twice. I mean, that's just a lot of work to be honest. I don't have time to post everything two times. Um, but once I can get my following where I want it to be, I will definitely be transitioning into a business Instagram page. Um, so now we can jump into the value of the challenge pack. Uh, which I think might be probably the most important thing I'm going to talk about on this call because I, I think you all probably heard so much on marketing that you're probably blue in the face. But anyway, so let's talk about the value of the challenge pack. So if I can be perfectly honest, um, challenge packs are the only thing that I promote. Um, I can't even remember the last one year or quarterly BOD subscription that I signed somebody up on. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Like if that's the only option that somebody wants to take, like absolutely that's quarterly subscription that I helped someone get started with was like my first week of coaching because I didn't know how to, how to promote a challenge pack. Um, So, and there are a couple of reasons that, I that I do this one is that it's truly the best value for the customer Um, they truly get the entire package I mean you're getting um, the workouts um, you're getting the shake you're getting just all all that stuff and and that stuff matters like that entire package matters because having all of that means that they're more likely to see better results and Guys, when people pay more for something, they're more likely to stick with it. Just being honest. Like if I'm paying 180 bucks or 160 bucks for something, I'm going to stick with it. Versus if I pay 39 bucks in three months, like I may or might, I might or might not even work out. Um, And then secondly, it's the most important thing in my opinion for you um, because it gets people on a monthly subscription. Um, to Shakeology or, you know, the recover and energize or however you do it. Um, And guys, for your business, you want as many people on that monthly subscription as possible. And is that being greedy? In my opinion, no, not at all. Like you, you need that for your business. And, and maybe, maybe the people cancel that shake after their very first month, but maybe they don't. Like if they don't cancel it, then that's extra money for you, but it's also a way to promote coaching. So for example, this past week, I actually signed up a coach because I was looking on my, in my coach's office that they got charged a a monthly fee, a full customer fee on their performance pack. And all I did was immediately go to them and say, Hey, I, I see that, you know, you're still using the, the supplements. Have you ever considered doing what I do and earning 25 or getting these supplements for a 25% discount? And um, they immediately jumped on it. And it wasn't anybody that, um, that I had really tried to recruit as a coach by any means. It was just, just a way to, to get that in their ear. Um, and then the second way, it can help you get coaches that being the first, but the second way is 
um, the Ashley Molstead video that Scotty shared, and I've shared it with my team uh, several times. And it's simply that when somebody starts to sign up for a um, for a challenge pack, all you have to say is they're both the exact same price. But if you sign up as a coach, you're going to get your monthly subscription for 25% cheaper than if you sign up as a customer. It's literally that simple. And most people are like, okay, yeah, well, if it's cheaper that way, I'll give it a try. So they jump on it and there you go. There's, there's your next coach. Um, so those are just some great ways right there um, that you can show value from the start. And I actually have three examples uh, that I'm going to show you of my conversations with some of my clients. I have taken their names out and all that, so you'll have no idea who they are. Um, but I just want to show you how I share um, how I share this with them. Uh, Scotty, I know he's really good at you know doing things over the phone and and having that conversation with people. I'm not as good at at public speaking and, and doing things like that. So I would much rather, I'm a better writer than I am a speaker. So whenever I do this type of stuff, I do a better job over a uh, messenger. So I'm going to show you a couple examples here. So this was me promoting a lift four challenge pack. Um, and before, can y'all see that fine? So before I get to this point, obviously I've had a conversation with this customer um, you know, we've gone back and forth four, five, six, seven messages of me trying to figure out, you know, what their goals are, how much time in the day do they have to work out, what kind of workouts do they like to do. And then I take that and I say, you know, in my head, I'm like, all right, this person, this person would be best suited for a lift four challenge pack. So that's immediately what I jump into. And I'm going to say, I mean, I'll read it straight to you. I'm gonna, and I'm, this is how I create value. I'm going to tell you everything that comes with the challenge pack. So I'm going to say this package actually gives you a, so, you know, it's going to be the, the eight week program, but on top of that, you're going to get a full year membership to all of our workouts. And if you guys don't understand how valuable that is, like that's worth thousands of dollars, nutrition plans, meal plans, workout plans for an entire year. If you tried to go out on the open market and get that from a tr personal trainer, that would be thousands of dollars. So even after the first eight weeks of lift four, you can move on to your next plan for no cost at all. It's also going to get you a nutrition guide, a one month supply of your pre and post workout, two resistance bands, a workout calendar, weight tracker sheet, and I'll add you into our online accountability group. You're going to get all of that for only $180. And guys notice my exclamation marks, my thumbs up, I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic about what I'm promoting and what I'm trying to trying to sell. At this time, I actually did, wasn't sure if I had any more $10 promo codes left, so I said, let me check, because I had sent out a couple of promo codes and they hadn't completed their share of cards yet. But you can see the message that I got back, just a simple, sweet, you know, people understand and that person is now my customer. So you can see that like, if you can actually create value and show them every single thing that you get in that challenge pack, people can understand that it's, it's valuable. Um, I've got a couple more here. Um, this is me promoting morning meltdown 100. And now this customer and his wife are in my new challenge group. So again, I'm going to say, I'll tell you what all comes in this package. You're going to get the 100 workout program plus a full year access to all of our plans. So even after the initial 100 workouts, you all can jump into another program for no cost at all. It also comes with a nutrition guide, one month supply of our nutrition shake, workout calendar, blender bottle, journal, et cetera. And I'll add you into the accountability group for only 160 bucks. So again, I'm just showing that value of every single thing that comes into this. Um, and my wife just got home, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but you can see again the, the message there, man, that's a sweet deal. I'll run it by the boss, let her know. The boss agreed that it was okay, and now they're in my challenge group. And here's the last one that I'm gonna share with you. 
I was promoting, uh, I narrowed this person down, promoted Transform 20 to them. Um, so I said, when you sign up, you're going to get, again, a full year membership on top of that six weeks. Tell them every single thing that's going to come with. You're going to get that for only 180 bucks. Uh, you can also add in, I meant to put step up box, but I put stop up box, or we can add that into your order as well. Um, so those are just some things um, that are very valuable. And you can see right there, I got an all right bro, very interested. So when people can like see that value, um, they're just, you know, they're, they're going to jump in on that. And I'm going to be honest. I haven't, I don't, I haven't had one person tell me that they think that that's too much. Like when I, when I build that kind of value to it, um, they don't say that that's too much. Now from there, now I'm going to jump into how I go about talking about the monthly fee. Cause you're probably wondering when do you tell them that? So I'm going to go into talking about the monthly fee after my share card has already been sent. Um, so I'm going to after I send them my share card, I'm going to say, okay, this was talking to a guy. Okay, man, I just sent it over. If you don't care, just let me know when you get it filled out and completed. And I have another email to send you. That email is going to be the same email that Scotty sent you when you first signed up, um, to per telling you about your challenge pack purchase. And I would say, um, to you, if you're not, doing that if you're if you haven't sort of emulated a email that you're following up with your coaches with from Scotty you need to do that because it's it really just sort of helps brand who you are in your business and makes you look way more official um, but you can see what I put in here after after that I said so whenever you sign up it's going to put you on a monthly subscription to the nutrition shake uh, Peyton and I drink them every single day and think they are worth the cost. But if you don't like them and don't want to keep purchasing them for whatever reason, you can cancel them without losing access to the workouts. If you like them and want to keep them, we can discuss transitioning you into a coach so that you get 25% discount on them each month. I definitely think that they are worth it. And I just, but I always like to tell everyone that so that you are aware of it. And I, I've still at this point have never had anybody be like, okay, well, never mind. I'm not doing that anymore. Like nobody has backed out from that point. So that's just another way that I've found that works for me. Obviously everybody has their own um, ways that they do things and it works for them. Um, so like I said, um, this past month um, I was able to, able to help 18 people get started on a challenge pack. I uh, did not help a single, <laughs> did not help a single person get on a one year or quarterly BOD subscription, not, not a single person. And I didn't even have the conversation. Um, so that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it, Scotty. Um, if anybody has questions or you got have things, that's, that's uh, sort of it for me. Yeah, let's do just a little q and I know Michael said something and Tamara just asked a question. First of all, thank you, Tate. That was some incredible just step-by-step. -step. I love the examples. I was taking pictures um, <laughs> so that I can uh, readjust some of my things too. So well, I'll, Yeah, and I'll say I shared <clears throat> some of those conversations into my coaches group and cool. the people that you know are in there, they jumped in and like, wow, that was so helpful they'd had, I guess, just a hard time coming up with the right words of how to promote that. So that's... Right. With, how about when I put the recording up of this in the, in the Dynasty Strong Team page, maybe you can drop a couple of those in there. We'll find some of the videos people asked for, um, like Raina's video. We can drop that in there. And I'll put some of the other things that I've seen in here as well, like my new coach email and stuff. Um, so Tamara says, my only objection for coaching... Uh, for coaching discount is having to enter the personal insurance number. Tamara, I, like, I, I understand that. I've seen that from time to time as well. For us here in the U.S., it's called the social security number. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, it's just something that's necessary in case that they do in the future decide to share it. Like it needs to be reported um, under the social security number or their personal insurance number. And that's the only reason that it's used for. 
Yeah, and so I've just been letting them know that it's to protect them too, right? So that there's not other accounts in their names or whatever, and then explain to them having them set up for coaching too. And some of them will be like, oh, okay, cool. Like, and I reassure them, like, if it wasn't safe, I wouldn't be doing this two years later and have put my personal information in there, right? And normally they'll go through, but there has been a few of them that are like, nope, absolutely not. And I was like, okay, well, like, there's always an option later on to do the coaching thing too. Yeah, and, and if that's the case, just have them pay for it. Otherwise, it just... Sorry. Yeah. Oh, cool. Michael, did you have something you wanted to ask or say? I saw a comment. Oh, I got that. I was asking him whenever he was talking about the um, posting. He got me. Thank you, sir. Cool. Does, does anybody else have any questions for Tate? Uh, let's see. I think Lewis, Lewis has one down here. It says getting a balance of men and women. Yes, I would say that I have the major. Well, I would say it's probably pretty close to a 50, 50 split, honestly. Um, so, cool. and, and I, I would actually kind of go in it. Me and Michael actually talked about this over the weekend. Um, there was a, a super weekend here in Lexington close to where we're from and nothing, nothing wrong at all with, women who promote sisterhood but the title of the group was like come join us for sisterhood or something like that and my wife couldn't even go because she had to work but i was just like eh, i'm probably gonna pass on the sisterhood thing so like yeah, we didn't go too we were like uh. <laughs> yeah so it you know if you're just don't forget that the, if you're a female in this business don't forget that there are males in this business too and right. you you can you know that's a pretty big part of the population. Don't forget them because they, they, well, they, it, it, it was they funny because it even turned me off because I'm like, well, I do this with my husband. I'm like, I, and I'm a girl. And I was like, and it even kind of turned me away because I'm like, I don't really think my husband wants to go. And I didn't really want to go do it by myself. You know, I was like, we do this as a team. And I was like, well, okay. So we just ended up doing our workout here. We were like, we're going to have our own super Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. And being someone like when I started this business, my coach very much was growing a team of women. And so for me, that was sort of the direction that I went. And I've had a conversation with Scotty about how to start introducing it to men. And so recently, actually, I have just been reaching out to couples that are friends of mine and inviting the wives and the husbands. Um, and so doing like couples challenges groups because I've had a few women who have turned down the opportunity of joining my groups because they do it with their husbands. They work out together. And if their husbands can't have the support, then they don't want to be a part of that. So I've really been focusing on doing like couples challenge groups and reaching out to um, guy friends of mine and sort of just getting comfortable with having that conversation with other men. And like, it's nothing against my husband being like, Oh, I don't want you to talk to like other dudes. Like for me, I just connect differently with women but I know for my business to just take off and for me to keep running and building like I need to start welcoming dudes into my group too and like, <laughs> Michael on our team has been seriously so fun he's like the only guy and he listens to all of our bantering and all of our lady conversations about unicorns and all of those things <laughs> but it makes it fun and I feel like I'm missing that piece so I really feel like it's super important to kind of open up my eyes to the fact that like I need to have men in this too because that's what this world is made of right it's yeah both of us and I'll say probably half of my morning meltdown challengers are couples it's a it's a husband and wife that are going through morning meltdown together and they're taking their selfies together every morning and posting to our group and it's it's awesome to see like it's it's so much bigger than just a, a workout it's yeah. two people actually coming together and doing something together and building their relationship and their marriage. And it's just, it's really cool. So awesome. Cool. Does anybody else have any things that you want to share? I see people saying this presentation is a gold mine. Thank you. Tate, uh, do you mind sharing your presentation? Um, that was Brian. And yeah, I, I just, I just want to reiterate and just, I believe that every home, Right, every home in the world needs Beachbody on demand and these meal plans, and it's just such an incredible value. Like, we were on vacation for nine days down in St. George, and there were times 
So I stayed up late with family and with Gabby's grandfather that I would stay up till like 1230 and I'd get up at like 730 instead of five. And my daughter would be doing country heat or size and I had to wait for my turn. And like, like as I think about that, like there's so much value in what we have and what we can give to a family, to a man and a woman, a family, uh, uh, and how their lives can change by us getting out there. So my challenge to everybody, and, and I'll close this out, is um, like any time that you, what's the word? I'll just say it directly. Anytime you feel like quitting or that any of these self-doubt things or my past this or I grew up this way, that, um, you're limiting the ability to reach and impact somebody um, by, by holding on to those things. And you are an incredible human being with all of the potential in the world to be able to reach and connect with someone, just like Tate is doing, just like Chris Pandolfo is doing. And, it's, and the only thing that's gonna shift is not necessarily a training like this. Yes, this is great step-by-step -step tips, but the shift in your mindset of saying, I'm gonna freaking do this. Like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to change my life. I'm committed to this for the long haul. And I'm going to help other people that are like me. And there's thousands, if not tens and hundreds of thousands of people out there that need my help. And if I'm going to sit back and be afraid or scared or shy or live in the person that I was 25 years ago, like, I'm not going to be able to reach them. So we have a huge mission. I'm going to challenge each and every one of you guys to step up a little bit taller and stronger and like truly represent who we are as dynasty strong and be empowering to other people. And that's by us rising up. So mm -hmm. the, trend, the trend of obesity continues on and we got to fight it. So thanks again, Tate. I'm extremely grateful that uh, you hesitated for a minute and Google searched top male coaches and you found this team. We're grateful for the advice that you're giving uh, for the fire and the light that you bring into our team. And we're excited. I'm excited to see you surpass what I've done because that's the wish of every sponsor in this business is that your coaches do more than you do and their lives are changed more than you can ever imagine. So guys have an incredible week and uh, let's get out and let's get to work. And no matter how you ended July, uh, remember your success is not your success club points or your rank. It's mm -hmm. that you are growing yourself and that you're challenging yourself to grow into your fullest potential and you're helping other people do that. Remember that. And let's go on and do the best we can in August. See you guys later. Thank you all so much.